about three months ago, I made this shirt and I did this with the sublimation DTF hack using the sublimation ink and DTF powder. And at that time, I said I probably wouldn't do this much more on my channel, but I was asked to try it again. And I said, why not? I will give it the what? Good old college try. Hello everyone and welcome to Crafting with Delonda. It's me again, Delonda. And thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, I am tackling the sublimation DTF hack once again. This time I am using my wide format printer and some of that A3 film. Now this is my first time using A3 film. It is the bigger film. So I'm excited about this process. I'm excited to share this tutorial with you. I do want you to know there was some headache and some heartache and it almost turned into hammer time. Thankfully, I was able to get through it and I'm going to share the full process with you in this tutorial. If you find it helpful at any time, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Now, without further ado, let's look at some of the examples or some of the snafus that I endured while I was testing out this process. And then we will look at materials, we will go into Cricut Design Space, and then we will do all the things required to accomplish this sublimation DTF hack successfully. Are you ready? Let's get started. See all of these shirts right here? So one of the things that I've always said is that I don't buy shirts in bulk. I might need to start if this continues, but let's just kind of go through it. So the first time I tried this hack, I just said, I'm just gonna use the powder directly on a black shirt and I'm just gonna wanna see what, what happens. So this was my first attempt at just the DTF film and powder on a black shirt, nothing underneath. I tried it, it didn't work. I tried it again using clear HTV by HTV Ron, and I thought, okay, well that might work. So that, yeah, you I mean you can see the image, but you can see that it didn't work. Then I tried it with white heat transfer vinyl underneath, and I don't know if I didn't press it long enough, or I didn't, I don't know. I don't know if I didn't use enough powder, but this was that second result let me see if you can see that okay you can kind of see it there but it was very light and i was disappointed so i said well let me try it again and this time i'll use a higher temperature and more powder so this was the third time i tried it so you can see the little gnomes right there and it looks good from afar but if i get close to the camera you'll be able to see that there was just way too much powder it was like a powder overload right so then i said well let me try it again because that was my tester shirt and this time i think i used too much pressure and i used butcher paper and that was a disaster because i couldn't get the butcher paper off so this is I think the third or fourth time and you can see all of that butcher paper is stuck then this was the fifth time i said okay no to butcher paper say no to butcher paper so i tried it this time and it looked okay just a little bit faded and like i didn't have enough pressure with my heat press so that is how that one turned out make sure you can see it really good so that was still a no-go then I tried it again, and so like I really want y'all to know, <laughs> I was testing it out. Then I started writing down the times and temperatures. So this was um, when I thought, okay, I almost got it. This one looked okay, but then I saw these lines at the top, and I knew this wasn't this wasn't the way to go. So when I tried it this last time it actually worked and i'm so excited to share this process with you so this is how it came out this time and i think i love it i think it looks great i think it looks fantastic actually um and i'm excited about it it's soft it let's see how it stretches it stretches nicely um there's a stretch 
So there is a layer of white heat transfer vinyl under here, but I love the way it turned out and hopefully you do too. Now let's look at the materials you will need in order to follow this exact same process. The materials I use for this project include my Cricut Maker. However, this can be done from any full-size Cricut cutting machine. My heat press is a StarCraft clamshell 15 by 15 heat press. I use the 12 by 24 inch standard grip mat from Cricut. I use the large black gildan heavy cotton t-shirt, a uh, Caesar weeder. I use Caesar heat transfer vinyl in white, so it's the Caesar Easy Weed. I used Wellister transfer powder for DTF printing. This is also Wellister transfer film. I use the A3 size, which is 11 by 17 approximately. This film also comes in the A4 size if you do not have a wide format printer. My ink is Sublimation Ink. It is the Hippo brand of Sublimation Ink. And my printer is an Epson EcoTank 15000 that has been converted to be used with Sublimation Ink. An optional material you will need for this project includes something to place the film in as you are pressing the powder or as you are placing the powder on top of your image. This is the box that my film and my powder came in. And what I did was I just cut the sides and the top off of the box and I placed butcher paper inside. The purpose of the butcher paper is to help me get the powder back into the bag once I was finished applying the powder. So you may not have a box this size, but you will need something to use as you are applying the powder, okay? So without further ado, let's head on over to Cricut Design Space. I am in Cricut Design Space and I'm connected to the Cricut Maker. The first thing I'm going to do is click on Upload and I am going to select this image that I downloaded from Creative Fabrica and I'm going to add it to my canvas. When it comes in, I can see this image is really big and I can see that the proportions are locked right here at the top of my panel. What I'm going to do first is reduce the view on my screen to right at 50%. When I look at my layers panel, I can see that I have an error message and it lets me know that I'm probably outside of the allowable space that Cricut Design Space will allow right now. So right here it says the image is too large for 11.7 by 16.5, which is the A3 paper. So what I'm going to do is click on auto resize image and it will resize the image for me to a size that is allowable. Now, what I'm going to do is go up here to the templates option and I am going to select a classic t-shirt template and remember, templates do not actually cut out. They are only there to help you with getting your images sized correctly for your shirt or your whatever your item of choice is. So I'm going to choose a men's short sleeve um, medium shirt. Now I'm going to actually choose a large shirt and the color of it is black. Now, when I look at this image, I do think that it is a reasonable size for a large shirt. And I know that this size is acceptable within Cricut Design Space. However, I do want to change it up a little bit. When I look here now at the top panel, I can see the proportions are not locked anymore, even though I did not unlock them. And I'm okay with that. What I'm going to do is click on the width right here because I do actually want this image to be wider. But I'm also going to pay attention to the height because the size of my heat press is 15 by 15. And I can see right here that this height is set to 15.4. If I leave it at this height, it would cause me to have to do a double press on my image when I'm getting ready to place it on the shirt and I don't want to have to do that. 
if you have a heat press that will accommodate this size and you want yours to be this size, then you can leave it here because this is a nice sized image. However, I am going to reduce the height of mine. I think I'm going to come down to right at 14.7 and I'm going to increase the width because I do want the design to be a little bit wider. Okay. All right. I think I'm going to go to right at about 10.5. Let's see what 10.6 Let's see, 10.6 by 14.7. I like the way this looks. Let me even look at 14.8. I think that'll be a little bit too big. I'll stick with 14.7. And I can see that I'm still within the allowable uh, size and this looks really good. What I'm going to do instead is I am going to add an offset to this image and I am going to resize the offset to 0.03. I want a very, very small offset. Okay, and I'm going to click apply. Now, I know you can't see the offset there because it's black. Let me change it to white. So you can see that you can see it's very, very thin and that's exactly what I want. What I'm going to do with this offset is change it from a print then cut to a basic cut. And I still want the color of it to be white. Okay. No, you can't see it, but I promise it's there. Now, what I'm going to do now is I am ready to click make it. Now, when I do that, I should have two mats. I should have one mat that is going to be my basic cut, and I should have a second mat that is going to be my print then cut. Typically, your print then cut will show up first because you have to get your image printed. Okay. Now, what I can do here is go ahead and flip these images so that once I get over to my prepare screen, I don't have to remember to mirror this but that is a matter of personal preference because either way works absolutely fine. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and click make it. Okay. And this is my first image. I'm going to go ahead and mirror this here. And this is my second image and I'm going to mirror this here. What matters is that both of these images match. Okay. So no matter what happens, no matter what you do on this screen, if you are going to be layering anything the both mats should match. Okay. I'm going to click continue. Okay. And it's looking for my Cricut maker, which is connected via Bluetooth. And I am actually going to do my basic cut first because I know this will be cut out and while this is being cut, I know that this can be printed. So I'll do my basic cut first. I'm using everyday iron on and I am going to get that cut out. The next thing I'm going to do is go to my print then cut and I am going to send this to my printer. The printer that I'm using is my Epson EcoTank 15,000, which has been converted to use with sublimation ink. I'm going to turn the ad bleed off and I'm going to use system dialog. I'm going to click print. Okay, once I'm over here, I'm going to click preferences. For my paper source, I'm going to keep it on auto select because I, I am going to be using the back tray. The document size is A3 right here. I'm going to select that. For my paper type, I'm going to choose photo paper glossy. I have also done this with premium photo paper semi gloss. Either one of those will work just fine okay i'm just going to use photo paper glossy for quality i'm going to choose high i am going to do a print preview i'm going to go to more options i'm going to go to custom making sure that the document size is still at a3 
I am going to turn bi-directional printing off. I'm going to click on advanced. I'm going to go to color controls and I am going to select the Adobe RGB, which are my standard color settings that I always keep it on. I am going to go ahead and reduce the density here. You can also reduce the density in the extended settings. Okay, and I am going to click OK. And I am not going to mirror this because I've already done that in Cricut Design Space. I'm going to click OK. Once I click print, nothing is actually going to print out. It's going to go to my print preview screen and it's going to show me what is what it will look like. Okay, I can see here that my image is facing to the right. And once I look over here, I can see that it matches what was on my prepare screen in Cricut Design Space. This is also important to note. Whatever it, your image looks like here should match what it's going to look like in Cricut Design Space. So now I am ready to click print. Everything that I will do from here will be back on the camera. I know this is a strange angle, but I wanted you to see the top of the Epson EcoTank 15,000. So I have some of the film and what I typically do is I'm going to place this film in this back tray. Okay, this is the A3 size of paper. And what I'm going to do once I click print is I am going to hold one of the sheets so that it doesn't take more than one sheet through the printer at a time. So it doesn't look like the paper is going at first, but I can tell that it is. It's just going very slowly. I'll speed this part up. You see, I have this tray out to catch the paper so that once the film comes out, it doesn't fall on the floor. Before I remove this from my printer, it is important for me to say right here that you should have everything ready. So I have my box that I'm going to place this image in. This ink is very wet and it is important to be careful with it and not drop it. So you can just like, I'm gonna just put it right here. I'm going to put this image right here on top and I am ready to get the powder poured on. Let's move this over to the table. So I have the DTF powder using the Wellister brand. And what I'm going to do is just pour a generous amount of this powder all over the image. I'm gonna pour a lot. The reason why I have butcher paper at the bottom is so that I can pour all of the unused powder back into the bag. It'll serve as a funnel for me. Okay, so I have it. I'm gonna close this up while I make sure the image is completely coated. I do have my heat press heated up to 385 degrees.
So I'm just making sure it's completely coated. And then what I'm going to do is just kind of like thump it just to get that excess powder off. You see how that powder is falling off? I'm just thumping the, thumping the foam. I'm going to let this sit on my heat plate for about one minute. You see the powder has a very light coat. What you want to make sure of is that your heat press is like really hovering over the powder to make sure it's melting in to the film. So like if you're using a heat press like this, you can kind of just let it hover like this. If you're using the HTV Ron Auto Press, you would just have it pushed in but not pressed down. If you're using a swing away heat press, you would have it hovering over on the over top. If you're using a Cricut Easy Press, you would just hold it and have it hovering over the image. I'm going to do this for approximately one minute. Before I remove my image from this heat press, what I want you to notice is how dark it is now. You can see that the powder is completely melted onto this film. So at first you can see the light coat of powder now you see the image is dark and you can't tell there's powder on it so it's completely dark let's go back to the table and i'm going to show you what to do next the first thing i'm going to do is get this powder poured back into this bag so this is where the butcher paper is going to come in handy i'm just going to carefully see i have the bag standing up right here And we are going to apply a second coat. Now this time, we're not going to do it as heavy as the first coat. The first coat was heavy. This second coat is going to be light. Okay, just light. And when I say light, I mean a little bit light, <laughs> a little bit light. Okay, I think that's plenty. Close this up. All right, and I am going to make sure it's all the way covering the image again. to thump away the excess again. Okay, you can see it's lightly coated. We're going back over to the heat press. So hopefully you can see that there is a light coat. Let me move the light. There's a light coat of the powder and the same way that I wanted to make sure the powder was melted the first time, I want to make sure it's melted this time. So I can bring this down again. Remember my temperature is set to 385 and I am going to let this hover for one minute. I'll speed this part up. Now when you're following this process, if you look at your image and it looks like any of that powder is not melted, continue to let yours hover until you have a vibrant, clear image with the powder that is melted, okay? So if you have to hover it more than once, you know, like you have to keep doing it multiple times, do that and do that until the, the powder is completely melted. All right, I have the image. I cut around it just to remove some of the excess. I actually could have gotten a little bit closer, but I think this is fine. Now let's move back over to the heat press. 
I have my heat press set to 300 degrees. I have a Gildan 100% heavy cotton t-shirt. I have it folded in half. I am going to do a pre-press and get a crease down the middle of my shirt. I do have my heat press set to, I would say medium to firm pressure or medium to heavy pressure. I'm gonna do a quick five second pre-press. Okay, now what I'm going to do is take the white heat transfer vinyl. I'm using Caesar Easy Weed and I am going to place it in the middle of the shirt. This is white Caesar heat transfer vinyl. I'm going to come down about three finger lengths from the top. I'm going to press this on 300 degrees. I'm just going to do about 10 seconds. This is Caesar Easy Weed. Caesar Easy Weed is a hot or cold peel. I typically peel mine hot, so I'm going to go ahead and peel it. Okay, that's the first layer. Now I'm going to turn my shirt to face this way so you can get a better view. Here's the first layer. I'm going to turn it this way. it'll make it easier on me also I'm trying to place this down so the goal is to just get it lined up let me bring you in a little bit closer I think I've gotten it as lined up as I'm going to be able to get it so the key to this image was starting with the bottom and lining it up against the white heat transfer vinyl and I think I have I think it's pretty good. I'm, I'm not going to press it much further than that. So now what I'm going to do is press this on 300 degrees for 20 seconds. It looks like we got a good press. Let me take it off so you can get a look at it and then we will take it to the table and let it cool down completely because this is a cold peel. But this is fresh off the press, hot off the press. So I'm gonna let you see it very carefully. Okay, so I pressed it for 20 seconds, 300 degrees. Okay, it has cooled down completely and this is the final countdown. I hope this works because I've printed this so many times. Okay, let's see. Let's start from the top. How about that? <laughs> it worked. It worked. Look at that. Boom, baby. <laughs> okay, it worked. It worked. All right, so this is the finished product. And as you can see, it worked. And I am so excited. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm trying to keep my composure. I'm trying to keep my composure. Okay, so if you found this tutorial helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today, and thanks for watching. Bye!